Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you all for being part of it. This community is still growing. I'm very, very excited about it. Lots of people are coming together, meeting up at car meets when they see each other's shirts. This is awesome. I never really expected any of this to happen, to be honest with you. So thank you all. It's you people that are making it one large community, not me. Okay, today we are doing the Solex 34 Picked 3. That is probably what 90 percent of you have on your vehicles so on your Beatles <laughs> I don't think you have one on your Chevy Malibu do you okay we're going to go ahead uh, this one's been sitting forever so we're going to go over how to disassemble it we'll ultrasonic bath it clean it up and show how it all goes back together and a couple tips and tricks for setting it up properly when you're going to go ahead and get it running okay so let's get it all covered today and let's get on it boom now as you can see here this thing's uh it's a mess this carburetor was actually found half buried in the mud at the salvage yard so honestly it's pretty rough but let's see what we can do with it <laughs> and it's okay we're going to take it apart show the proper procedure for disassembly get everything apart there's even a couple hidden places in there you have to clean really well and get it back together and we're going to show you tips and tricks on setting it up and getting it ready to run. Uh, I am missing an idle jet there. I will try to find one. If I can't find a 55 or 60 idle jet here in my crap, then I will go ahead and just show you a picture of one. And then you just wind it in. It's not a big deal. So I don't even know if I get a new gasket. This is just a tutorial and a DIY. So let's go. All right. First thing is first. Let's turn on our heater on the ultrasonic and then we can go ahead and start taking the carburetor apart all right this thing's been sitting around for a very long time something i did see i was looking it over look you can turn the choke thermostat and the screws are tight so i'm gonna have to figure out if this needs dimpled in more it don't look like the right one it looks like it's sitting too loose now I do have one that might be thicker, if that could be the issue, or we have another bracket that I'm wondering if it would sit in further. So we'll get that figured out, okay? But this one looked like it was in a fire. I can see fire extinguisher residue, so I don't know. But Let's go ahead and start taking it apart. This will be a complete 34 pick 3 Solex video. So first, let's get our little screw gun. You know what? No. First, let's take this apart. I know, using a screw gun a lot lately. There we go. Remember, keep your parts together. Don't get sloppy and have them all over the place. Okay. Alrighty, one more. Oh, pretty cool, huh? Alrighty, let's give us a little tap just to make sure. Oh, there we go. And there's the spring. Don't lose your spring. Okay, we'll set it right inside of there. Okay, let's take the choke thermostat out and call it what you want. That's what I call it. So let's, whoop, wrong way. Alrighty. Keep on. This is just a little screw gun. I don't want to put my big Milwaukee on there and end up breaking something. This thing's weird. Okay, now as you've seen, and I can't find one, oh, there it is. See these the little plastic spacers? There's three of them. Don't lose those. Okay, there's the choke thermostat. And is the other one wider that I have? Mm -mm. Something's weird about that. We'll figure it out as we go along. Okay, let's take the top off. You have five screws. 
you have one, two, three, four, and five. So let's zap them off. I don't think I like a screw gun. We are going to clean all these screws up. We want them to look like new. Because we do. Okay. One more. Okay. That is all of them off of the top. Okay, oh, there come the gasket. That's a good thing. All right, inside of here, and we're gonna get the top cleaned up first. We have to take this out, so let's be gentle so we don't rip it. See, there's a little peg that lines it up. Come on, get off there with that ripping. Because I don't have other ones. I'm just doing a demo here. I got to get a new kit. And that slides out. That's what it looks like. Okay. So, now remember, if yours is ripped, then you will need one. You want to replace them anyhow. I have a kit laying here with a bunch of gas, get some parts. But I've beat it out so bad that I need another one. But... This is just a DIY to give you an idea on what to do. So, flip it over, get a 14 millimeter, break that loose. That is your fuel shutoff valve, okay? And something very important here that you need to know. Do you see that? Okay, this is a spacer. There are different sizes, I don't know how many, maybe two. I forget the sizes. I'll put it up right here if I can find it. That space is this. So when this is hanging down, yeah, you know what? I'll go over that when I'm putting it together. Don't lose the spacer. Okay? Don't be stupid. All right. So everything is off of that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put it in and let it soak while we take apart that. So let's get up here. Okay, now I pre-warmed this. Let's see where our temperature's at. Curious to know. We're climbing quickly, so I know it's heated up enough. Seems to shut off sometimes when it gets too hot. I think I'm going to buy a better and bigger one. Okay, we're up about 140 close to it, which is perfectly fine. Okay. So what we are going to do, I don't feel like digging the basket out, so I'm just going to hold on to this and put it in. Okay, put the lid on. We got it set for... What you're seeing here is 480 seconds. That's how Harbor Freight does theirs. This will be eight minutes because 60 seconds in a minute six times eight is 48 eight minutes bam while that is cooking if that's the term i should use i don't know we're going to go ahead and start disassembling this so let's get to it and start taking it apart oh the bigger screwdriver okay be easy. Remember, you're working with brass and aluminum, so don't act like a monkey and start ripping stuff out. Okay, let's take off the idle jet. I found one to put in there temporarily. This is a number 60. Probably really good for the day's ethanol fuels to make it run a little richer. Uh, let's see. Oops heck was that? Ugh. Okay. And don't worry, I'll go over everything we're putting it together. I don't know. This looks crusty. I don't know if it'll need soaked first. 
Come on, get in there. Mm -mm. Wow. Okay. We're going to remove the float. Now you're going to notice here the little hold down. Notice the direction it's in. I'll go over that when I'm putting it together. Okay. And I'll tell you why it should only go in one way. Alrighty. Let's take our float out. I wonder if that's a aftermarket float. I'll clean it up and find out. Okay. All right. Here's the fun part. Take a tail light screw. It's ones that hold your tail light in. I know that's weird, but it threads into here. Mine's bent, which I don't care. I don't want to ruin two screws. And thread it in. There we go. Take a Phillips. Where's my Phillips? I know that looks weird bent. Okay. Do you see where it's at? Tail light screws will fit directly inside of there, but whatever you do, do not over tighten it. Just snug it. That's all you need to do. That's a tail light screw. That's what holds your tail light lens on. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead. I don't think it's going to come out that easy because we have to pull that out. That's a pressed fitting. I'll show you in a minute. <clears throat> Okay, it's going to fight with me. We'll do it the old way. That shut off, and it still had probably four minutes to go. It's like it overheats. I don't get it. Okay. All right, so here's what I normally do when I have one wanting to fight with me. Okay, and you may have to do this too. I snap a pair of ice grips on. It's towel. I take a hammer. Okay, and it works every time. Now let me show you so it makes sense. All right. Do you see what came out of there? A little ball bearing. Don't lose that. Okay. And just leave the screw in there for now. See how that's a press fit? And it goes right down inside of there. Okay. I hope you can see that. You should be able to. I can't tell looking through the camera. As you can see, that is the hole that that fitting is pressed into and the ball bearing seats down inside. Don't lose the ball bearing. Take your time. But it goes right down inside there. And we take that out because we got to get that valley cleaned up. Alrighty. So let's take our shut off solenoid. Okay. Parts everywhere. Okay. 14 millimeter. No, I thought that was 14. Must not be. 13? Yep. Okay. And this plugs off your fuel bowl. Don't lose the washer on it. It's like a crush washer type of thing. And guess what? Oh my. Okay, there is no main jet in here. And I'll stick the screwdriver through. It goes right there. Let me get my little light. Okay. The main jet will go right in there. So we'll put one in. Now, as you can see, the arrow is pointing to where the main jet was supposed to be. But this carburetor was found in the dirt. A little bit buried. Not a big deal. I know I got one on hand. So, okay. That's a part. 
and now it's time to move to the side. Okay, we are going to go ahead. Let me just set these under here. There we go. We have to take this clip off and hopefully it don't fly away. And let's try. I hate these things. And I seldom use the word hate. Come on. This thing fought with me. I finally paused for a minute because I know you guys will just fast forward through it then. This dang thing is a pain to get off. You usually have little cotter pins. So you're going to put a screwdriver at the end of it and tap it off. I never had one. Give me a second. I know you can't see. It came off. That little thing fought to no end. Unbelievable. And I believe, yep, there's one on this end of it. Wow. I like it where they have a hole in them, but I don't have a drill bit that small. And they have a cotter pin. So, well, that was fun. All right. Let's move along. Let me check something first now that I got held up. Ooh, very nice. Okay, I think that is cleaned out really good. So we're going to put it in the water. Phew, it really smells. Okay, let's put this on for now so it stays warm. Okay, back down to the carb. I cannot get this out either. I think that it has been in there too long. I might soak it first and see if it'll break loose. I don't think I have another screwdriver that'll fit in there. Is it coming? Oh, I got it. Yeah. There you go. Okay. You gotta watch with brass because it ends up tearing apart easy, you know, so. All right, you got that little guy out. So, we have our volume screw. Come on, get out of there. There we go. That bad boy's dirty. Okay, will you fit in there? Of course not. Okay. Alrighty, be careful. You don't want to smash the end of that. Okay. All right. It's all apart. It's all apart. It's all apart. We're almost there. Blah, blah. We are going to go ahead. Oh, come on. Oh, didn't want to stop. Come on. There we go. And I don't know if we'll be able to get this in there. I doubt it. Okay, and one more. All right. Well, I got crap everywhere. Okay. Oh, really? There we go. Remember, just gentle taps with stuff like that. There's the diaphragm, there's the spring. I think that's it. Let's take our valve cap off. Somebody had on there to plug it. All right. And I think that is all. Okay. Now, I don't have a super duper tank. Mine's only the two and a half liter, so. I'll go ahead and put it in, as you'll see here. Okay. 
and then when that's done, I'll uh, turn it upside down the opposite direction and this ain't closing. What the heck? I don't remember that happening to me before. It's because of the studs on the bottom. Okay, well that's how it's going to run. Okay, we'll set it for eight minutes. Heat on. Bzz, there we go. Let's take the top out. And where is... I have got a mess. I have got a mess going on here. Okay. I always like to give it a little scrub. Can't hurt. Wow, it's come out pretty nice. Especially for sitting forever. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm gonna rinse it again. And then we're gonna go over and blow it off. This is just water I'm rinsing the, the chemical off of. And then we're gonna clean that up. Okay. Give me one second, I'm gonna go blow this off. Get all your little holes. Okay. Pretty good, pretty good. That bothers me, that needs cleaned. Be right back. Okay, so I ran it on a wire wheel just to clean it up a little bit, okay? It was just nasty looking, so. Looks like it cleaned up pretty well. I mean, it's not a, gonna go into the Grand Tong course or anything, but. I mean, I can take some quad O, and I'll show you right here in a second. And that's what it would look like. But this is just to show you how to take it apart, clean it, and put it together. So I'm not going to sit there and do that right now. Although it would be fun because... <sighs> wow. Okay, well, you know it can be done. That's what matters. So other than that, this is done. So while that's soaking the bottom half we'll start putting this back together okay let me get a little more of this cleaned up i mean remember this was really bad <sighs> that's pretty good it just gotta run okay let's get just wiping it out with my finger Let's get our parts. So, this will go in there. And make sure that you put this on the notch where it goes. Okay? Just like that. So, let's get our cover. Okay, there's the spring. Alrighty. You're going to put that on there. It's going to look like this. It seats inside of there, okay? So your little hole needs to line up there. So you're going to put that on like that. Get your little screws, three little screws. I should have cleaned those up. But I'm just trying to do a quick DIY to show you how it comes apart, goes together, so on and so on. And then the setup for it. Okay, so, come on. Okay. Alrighty. Come on. Okay. So, that's together. Like I said, this could be a lot cleaner. You see why I'm doing this and what I'm doing. Okay, so that'll work there. Okay, pause a second. Wow. 
I'm going to turn that heat off a little bit. We need to flip this over. Okay. So that the other side can bake for a little bit. Hmm. Thought it'd look a little cleaner for some reason, but let's cook it some more. So. Okay. And there we Back go. To this. Let me see something because that other one. Ah, it was the plate. This one's not turning. Let me clean this up with the wire wheel a minute. Maybe that's what's wrong. Or it's inside of here. Let me see something here. I don't know if there's something just grabbing on there. There we go. Now, will this hold down, hold it in place? It doesn't seem to be compressing against there. Yeah, it will now. Okay. All right. First, this little tang here. See that little hook? I'm sure you know this, but it goes right onto that arm. All right, so we're going to put it on that arm, and we are going to turn this. You're going to see three notches right there, okay, right there, and you see the mark that I kind of engraved into it, okay, and it slipped off. Let me try this again. Not a big deal. See? Okay, that's where you want it. You want it just, you can even back it off just a hair, but you want that tension on it, okay? So let's put this on. Here's how I really like to do this with the first one. I like to put the screw on and thread the little spacers on. Sometimes they'll thread on like that, which makes it nice. Okay. And another one. Come on, get on there. All right. And another. Come on. All right. So. That is where we want it to be. Pretty nice. Okay. I don't like the positioning of the wire, but it's all right. It'll still hook up. Come on, get on there. All righty. Didn't sound right. Okay. All right, so this is what happens when you try to film and rush at the same time. I forgot to put this inside the thermostat housing. I'll take it apart and show you real fast. All right, so I removed the bracket, okay, and take this off. This goes on just like that, and it presses in lightly, okay? And then, whoop, let me fix this. There we go. Then you're just putting it back together, as I showed, you know, with this sliding in and the spring. So I missed that part, sorry about that. But it happens, I refuse to edit out mistakes. I don't like to do that because we all make them. Here is the fuel shutoff valve. Your float comes up and it hits this and it shuts the fuel off going into the carburetor, or I should say the fuel bowl. These, spa these are spacers. They have to be in there. You only need one, but you have to have the right size. So that can be another film, but there's a way of measuring and knowing if it's uh, the right spacer and if it's shutting off at the right time. 
So take your 14, snug it, don't go crazy, okay? And we're going to turn that over. All right, that is done. Okay, let's see what we got here. Hmm, not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Let me put that back. Because we're done with that for now. Okay. So, what we will do first is... Where is... That's the idle jet. Where is my main jet? Oh, it's over here. I took one out of a case I had. This is... Can I see it? One, I can't see it. 127.5. Uh, in this day and age, a lot of people like to run a 130 because of ethanol. So do what you feel is right for your application. You're going to bring your screwdriver in there. I hope you can see this. And turn it in and don't crank it with all your might. Snug it tight. If that makes sense and let me show you it's right inside there okay so that's in place let's go ahead and put this on the I call it the bolt cover make sure you put your washer on don't forget that it's like a crush washer all right and make sure you use the right size wrench Oh, I got crap everywhere. I need to clean the garage up. That's a 13, in case you need to know. All right. So, let's go ahead and put our mixtures in. Where is my screwdriver? It ran away. I must be getting tired today. So, we're going to put this in. Now, you're going to take it in the whole way, and don't crank it tight. I don't mean to keep repeating myself, but I know what you do. Okay, so, snug it up. Come out two and a half turns. Half, one, half, two, and a half. Do your own research. Okay, now this has a needle on the end of it, so don't tighten it too tight or you will puncture it through the carburetor inside and it'll never run right again, ever, eternity. Okay, Okay. so you're just going to send that home. I'm trying to get out of your way here. It's not easy. Okay, whoops. You're going to... Run that in and gently when it seats. Do not turn it hard. You will punch a hole in there and you won't be happy. Okay. I'm just going slow and easy. <sighs> Come on. There's a rubber on there, O ring, so. Okay, it's seated. Oop. I'm trying to go easy. Okay. Half, one, half, two, half. Okay, those are preset to at least get it started. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to put this shutoff valve in yet because it'll be in my way. So let's go this way to the inside. Now, it's time to put your ball bearing down in, let me see, where's my pointer? Right there, okay, that's where it will go. You see that? Right inside that hole, the ball bearing goes. So you're not gonna be able to watch me put it in, but it's in, okay? So remember the pressed in fitting, okay? We're gonna put it in there. 
and we're going to take our hammer and don't smack it with all your might. There we go. And I'll bring you in close and show you something. Let me just unscrew this, get it out of your way. That's the tail light screw that holds the tail light lens on. It is the same thread. Okay. All you got to do is make sure that's seated down inside. Okay, don't go smacking it with all your might. All right. So now we did that part. The main jet's in. You have this seated. We're going to get the Venturi, put it in. Okay. And Oop. the screwdriver is not the best fit for this. If you see what I mean there. Come on. There we go. Just snug it up good. Snug it to the point where you know it's not going to come loose. Okay. So we'll take our little wee, little wee eensy beensy. I'm going to put that in. Okay. Right there. I know sometimes I block you. Temporarily, I didn't clean the end of that screw. This one's tough to get started. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Because it's very tiny to work with. Come on. Line up properly. There we go. Okay. You see where it goes, don't you? Okay. And the idle jet. This is a 60 right there. And you will take an 8 millimeter. Snug it. Don't go too tight with that, okay? All right. We're getting there. Almost home. All right, so we are going to go ahead now, set your spring on there, like a little mountain, okay? This, you'll see the stem, it goes inside of here, just like that, all right? Now, this here, this arm's going to go through there. Then, you got to keep this pushed up. Here, let me get it seated in place. It's hard to show you every single thing, although I can come back and show you once I get it set up. Make sure you line this up very well so you don't want to strip the screws, okay? So keep it lined up good. Get a couple screws started. Here, let me get these two started. Come on, get on there. There we go. Come on. Okay. Oh, goody. Caught my glove. Alrighty. Next one. I don't like how that's sitting. Let me loosen this just a hair. There we go. Okay. Put our other screw in, right in there, and I'm going to get in here with that little screwdriver. There we go. Come on. Okay. And I'll give them a little tightening cranking action. Okay. Okay. That is tightened up. I'm going to have to get a new clip for that, but no big deal because I don't have one here. But that's working perfectly fine. All right. We're getting there now. Now, we are going to put, I know that most of you know and some of you don't, that's where your fuel sprays out inside of there. When you put this in, seat it down. Okay, but it's going to have to sit directly down 
the middle. You don't want it spraying on this arm and you don't want it spraying on the side of the bowl. You want it to spray in between that arm and the bowl right down the center. What I do is I take my screwdriver once it's centered and I just give it a little tap. Not on the arm. I'll show you in a second. Okay, and it's nice and tight. Here's what I was talking about. See this here? I set my screwdriver on top of this ridge and I tap it down. Whatever you do, do not tap on this. You'll bend it, okay? Now, this leads us to the next thing is the float, okay? Here, let me set the carburetor where you'll understand what's going on like that. Let's get our float. Now, I didn't clean the float up like I said. This is just a DIY on how to take it apart and get it together and what to do. So what you should do is clean your float up real nice and test it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to put our little hinge pin. That's what I named it through there. All right. And we're going to set it right down in the slots. Okay. So it moves up and down freely. Make sure it's moving. Now this is important. Don't mess this part up. Do you see this clip? Yeah? Okay. Put this on like that. You do not want this lip coming out this way. You want that curve to face the back of the fuel bowl because if not, it can stop the float from coming up high enough. So this little curve goes back against here. All right. That should make sense. Okay, we are almost there. We're getting ready now to put the top on. The gasket. Now, obviously you're going to put a new gasket on. I don't have one here. As I said probably too many times, this is just a DIY to show you what to do. I ran out of gaskets. I went through a bunch of them actually. But you're going to put your new gasket on. Okay, then we're going to set this in place. Move your arm out of the way. Let me go from this side. It's usually a little easier for some reason. Okay. And that's set in place. Let's get our screws. I'm sure you cleaned the heads up. There. Two. Three. Four. And five. Okay. All righty. This doesn't have much torque to it, so I'm not doing nothing stupid. This just pretty much snug stuff up. Okay. Alrighty. And then, of course, take your screwdriver, go around if you did what I did, and just tighten them up. All right. You're going to put your shutoff valve back in. Okay. And you will end up tightening that up with a wrench. Okay. It's 14 millimeter. And of course you'll want to put a return spring from here to here. And guess what? I can't find mine, but it's okay. You are seeing what needs done and that's what matters okay let's go over a couple of things of course i always do because i'm a pain in the butt give me one second so that was our solex 34 pick 3 video okay remember you need your return spring from there to there it holds it shut now one thing you want to do also is unscrew this screw let me get my gloves off a minute you want to unscrew this okay you want to go to the lowest point, okay? And you only want this screw to just barely, 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 barely even touch it. This is not an adjustment for your idle, okay? This is. Now you just want to go ahead and have it barely touching it and back off just a squeak. And that's where that will be set, okay? I just wanted to make sure you know that. Yes, we could have gotten the carburetor a lot cleaner, but I don't think you wanted me to do a two-hour video, okay? So it is cleaned up, though, like it should be. 
Yes, I could have polished it and made it look like chrome, but you know what? That's good enough for a video just to show you what exactly goes on. Okay, let me close out and give you some information. All right, that was this week's DIY, okay, and that's for the Soul X34 Pick 3, which I know you're already aware of that. Uh, that carburetor is on so many beetles, it's unbelievable. Always make sure you use the proper distributor. A lot of times the Bosch 009 or Mechanical Advanced distributors will give you a little bit of a flat spot at around 15, 1800 RPM. I was able to avoid that somehow with my one car. I must have tuned it pretty well. Uh, the Vacuum Advanced distributor is more compatible with the 34 Pick 3. And I know some of you are going to say, I run a 009, that's fine. I'm glad it works for you. I'm just giving some advice before somebody is a wisecracker. Okay, so we are going to go over something next week or the week after. Volkswagen fires, fire prevention, how to keep prepared for it with an air-cooled engine, you know, if something would go wrong. Hopefully it never does. Uh, I've been doing a lot of wire wheeling on the car and cleaning up the inner wells. I haven't really filmed too much. I just took a bunch of photos because I really don't believe you guys want to watch me sit there and wire wheel constantly. I would be bored with it. I will do an update and show everything soon on that. And then we're, uh, we're going to have to start getting on that interior, the suspension, the brake lines, a little bit of everything. So have a great weekend, everybody.